Hello and warm welcome to today's talk, Wednesday the 24th of May today. Now the director of the British Heart Foundation over the last few days has said that there's been an astonishing rise in the incidence of the diagnosis of atrial fibrillation, this irregular heartbeat, where the top chambers of the heart beat completely irregularly, they just fibrillate, and the bottom chambers of the heart, the ventricles, as a result, contract very irregularly, giving rise to an irregular pulse, which is often fast. Now, before we look at what he's been saying, and we'll be asking some pretty uh, probing questions on this, let's just look at the normal rhythm and the abnormal rhythm that we see on the ECG, and let's uh, look at the um, uh, h how I can diagnose this on myself by palpating my pulse. Let's do that first. So first of all here we're looking at a normal rhythm. This is called a sinus rhythm. It's originating from the sinoatrial node in the heart and we see the normal wave we would expect, the P, this QRS and the T and it's fairly regular. It's a normal sinus rhythm and we can see it refreshing there and currently the heart rate is 71. So that's what it should look like. Let's now compare that to atrial fibrillation for comparison. Now here by contrast we see that this patient is in atrial fibrillation. So the ventricles are still contracting, these spikes we can see here, but the bit in between the atrial contraction is all completely irregular, the atria are fibrillating. And this gives rise to a very, very uh, irregular feel to the pulse. So that is atrial fibrillation there. And that's what there's been an astonishing rise in, in the United Kingdom. Now I'm just going to check if I'm in atrial fibrillation myself at the moment. So there's my uh, left hand. And if you move up to the wrist there, in line with the thumb, you've got that uh, knobbly bit on the bone there, the radius in line with the thumb. Then you've got that tendon there that pulls up when you move your hand. You can feel it tightening. And what's good to do is if you form a few fingers in a row like that and just put them flat on something, then that gives you a bit more sensitivity. And if you put your fingers on that tendon there and then just move them down over the radius there and press in that little valley, that little notch you can feel there. And if you press on that, you can feel how regular your heart rate is. That's the pulse, good place to feel the pulse there. And it should feel fairly regular in terms of rate and amplitude. If it's irregular, then that is uh, an abnormal finding. So what we're looking at today largely comes from this article here. Number of people with heart rhythm condition rise by 50% in a decade. That's the article there. And there's some fairly probing questions we want to ask about that. But let's run through some of the uh, main points of the article first of all. So that's the title there and that's the reference there. We'll always check it out for yourself to make sure I'm not making this up. Now atrial fibr fibrillation, uh, 1.5 million sufferers in the UK. Um, it was 1 million in 2013. That's a 50% rise over a, a decade. Now of course immediately you're going to ask well when did this rise occur? And the article doesn't tell us. That will be part of the question that we're going to be looking at. In fact, where they get these numbers from is a little mysterious, but uh, more on that in a minute. Um, so they're saying it's a 50% rise in a decade. One in 45 people in the UK currently have atrial fibrillation, which is a very high number. These people are five times more likely to have a stroke, potentially fatal or life-changing stroke. Now, what happens here is because the top chambers of the heart aren't contracting properly, they're just fibrillating then that means there's pockets of blood that aren't being ejected with the contractions and you get sort of stagnant blood in the atria and that can contract um, because the atria aren't contracting that can congeal rather and you get blood clots forming because of the stasis in the blood because it's just fluttering rather than uh, purposefully contracting so that makes perfect sense and of course we've known about this for as well as long as I've learned about these things for decades so more likely to have strokes um Believed to contribute to one in five strokes, an estimated 270,000 people in the UK are undiagnosed. They don't know they have it. So that means there's possibly 1.77 million people in the United Kingdom who have atrial fibrillation. This is a remarkably 
high number. When did these numbers go up? More on that in a second, because we're not actually told, so I'll be asking those questions. Uh, symptoms of atrial fibrillation, palpations. Uh, so, so that's basically an awareness of the heartbeat. You can feel that your heart is beating inside your chest or, or thumping inside your chest. Often, you, well, it will be irregularly. Breathlessness, dizziness. And paroxysmal means that this can come and go. So people can have this some of the time and not have it at uh, other times. And typically it's fairly fast. Most atrial fibrillation is, is, is fast atrial fibrillation, although you can get slow versions um, as well. Typically the heart rate is well over 100 actually, but very irregular when you palpate the pulse. Our medical director, uh, Professor Nilash Samini, so this is the medical director of the British Heart Foundation. Uh, these figures show a quite astonishing rise, his words, uh, in the number of people diagnosed with atrial fibrillation. Uh, they say research has helped us understand the links between atrial fibrillation and stroke. Well, yeah, I guess it has, but <laughs> there was research that was probably done before the start of my career, so it's slightly disingenuous there. Uh, I can't remember a time when I didn't know, um, well, I suppose when I was a, first year student or something but at any time I've done cardiology we've always known that atrial fibrillation increases the risk for stroke for cerebrovascular accidents as blood clots can be um, leave the heart and go up to the cerebral vasculature um, we also need to continue to harness the power of science I'm not sure I like his turn of phrase here but never mind harness the power of science to develop new and innovative tools for identifying people at increased risk well, if that means we need to do some epidemiology on that, I guess is is right. Uh, the British Heart Foundation also say um, the figures have been released as we launch uh, a new campaign rolling out, roll, uh, calling on the public to support our research. So basically, they seem to be doing this to try and uh, get money out of the public for their research. Um, some of you might think there's question marks over some aspects of the work with the British Heart Foundation. Others of you might be quite happy with it, but they're certainly looking for money here. And actually, in the second part of this article, uh, they do talk about an individual um, who, who had a stroke. And um, uh, yeah, talking about individuals, if, if they give the permission, it's fine. It's fine, but it's just, yeah. If, if they give the permission, it's fine, which obviously this lady has. Uh, the figures have been released as we launch our new campaign, so they're trying to get public support. They want your money for their research. Uh, the campaign aims to inspire people's wonder at the complexity and uh, <laughs> the complexity of their own body. Um, sure, sure. Well, sure. Yeah, that's obviously true. Uh, and how, how life-saving research can help if it goes wrong. Yes, bodies are complex and uh, precious. Again, that's fairly obvious. Anyway, so we've got this uh, great increased uh, rate of um, atrial fibrillation, but it doesn't say over which years it occurs. So I've got some questions for the British Heart Foundation here that, that I'd like them to answer. Um, what was the rate increase or change in prevalence during 2019, so pre-pandemic, 2020, when there was a lot of covid and then 2021, 2022, 2023, when there was other interventions being carried out. So basically we want a graph, don't we? But we're not given one. So the British Heart Foundation is saying they've got figures here, data here, but they're not telling us what it is, which is rather frustrating, really. Do they know what it is? If they know what it is, why isn't that being shared with the public? Do they have data that other agencies don't have? If not, why is that not being shared with the public? Or don't they have the data? But this article certainly implies that they have the data because they're talking about this increase. Um, has the increase been correlated with any particular factors that have been changed between 2019 and uh, 2023? So anything that's happened in that period of time that could have increased the rate of atrial Fibrillation, have any correlations been made? They don't tell us that, but I'm asking them that. And if so, what is the strength of these correlations? Is there a strong correlation? If there's a strong correlation, it's more likely to be causal. Is there a temporal correlation effect? So temporal correlations means that the effect has to come after the cause. So is there a cause that's 
occurred, and then there's been an effect after that cause. I'd like to know that as well. Again, we're not told that. Is there any temporal correlations? We're not told. Um, is there a plausible mechanism to explain correlations? It's always better if correlations can be accompanied with some sort of plausible mechanism. Something that can explain what's going on in biological, physiological terms. For example, is there anything that's affected the myocardium of the atria that could have caused the abnormal rhythms? A plausible mechanism of action. Unfortunately, that one gets another uh, question mark. We're not told that. Um, how do UK figures uh, of increased atrial fibrillation relate to other countries? Is this a global phenomena? Um, are there particular countries uh, that have been through particular experiences where this, this is higher? We don't know. We're not told. But that would be an interesting question to ask. Might be a good line of scientific research for the British Heart Foundation. Are there any common factors that connect potential changes across different countries, as we've said? Now, the reason it looks like the British Heart Foundation are up to date with these numbers is I had a really good look around for where they could have got this data from. And um, the only thing I can think is it's their own data because I can't find any other data in the public domain. All I could find, the most recent one, was this article in the, in the Lancet, Regional Health uh, uh, Europe. Uh, the data, this was published in June 2022, so fairly up to date. But the data only went up to 2017. And yet this article from the British Heart Foundation was released in 2023. So presumably they've got data for 2017, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and potentially for, for 23. If so, um, we would like that release, please. Because this article um, is talking about... Um, the increase up to the the present time um so quite where that um data is is actually a bit of a bit of a mystery now it would be remiss of me to finish this video without um giving you some advice from the nhs website which i put a link for uh, see a general practitioner or call 111 if you have chest pain that comes and goes you have chest pain that goes away quickly but you're still worried. You notice a sudden change in your heartbeat. Your heart rate is consistently lower than 60 or above 100, particularly if you're experiencing other symptoms of atrial fibrillation, such as dizziness and shortness of breath. It's important to get medical advice and make sure it's nothing serious. So I'll put that link there. So um, so I've got, that's, that's, um, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, six or seven questions there for the British Heart Foundation. Um, that would really cast a lot of light on this, but particularly what data do they have for 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, and 2023? And uh, if they have that data, why is it not in the public domain? So we'll leave it there for now. It is of a, of a concern that there is more atrial fibrillation. 1.77 million people in the UK with it, uh, which is... Uh, it's a lot of people. It's one in 45 people in the United Kingdom or more or higher than that have got atrial fibrillation. So a significant uh, pathology and uh, greatly increasing the risks of strokes as well as being a problem in its own in its own right. So we'll leave it there and hopefully we'll get some more data from the British Heart Foundation uh, soon. We would hope. Thank you for watching.